Coming up on this edition of City Scene, it's tea time at Dave White Municipal Golf Course. Plus, books, tablets, and more. We'll show you what's new at the Casa Grande Library. It all starts now on City Scene. Hi, my name is Mary Allen, Grants Coordinator with the City of Casa Grande, and your host for the show. Happy New Year! The weather outside is a lot cooler, making it a great opportunity for outdoor recreation, specifically golf. Our first guest today is Bob Bauer, Director of Golf at Dave White Municipal Golf Course. Welcome, Bob. Well, it's good. I'm glad to be here. Bob, tell us a little bit about the golf course. The golf course is a regulation 18-hole golf course. It has three sets of tees. Um, it was designed, the front nine was designed back in 1979 by a very, who, uh, uh, Gary Panks, who is now a very uh, renowned uh, golf course architect. The front nine was his first effort at designing a golf course. The back nine was uh, completed in 1989 with a different architect, and the two, the two courses are, the two nines are distinctly different, front nine being very uh, straightforward right in front of you. The back nine has a lot more challenges, uh, some opportunities to cut corners, and to uh, if that and if you're successful, you get rewarded very well. But if you are not successful, then you're penalized very heavily. Uh, we also have a nice practice facility. We have what people would normally term a driving range, but it's a practice facility. We have a a chipping green, a pitching green, a practice bunker, and also we have uh, a putting green. Uh, as far as the clubhouse, we recently renovated it this summer and we have a full bar, not full, uh, not a restaurant, but we do serve sandwiches and hot dogs, snacks, and that sort of thing. Tell us a little bit about the history of the golf course. The golf course, uh, to my, with my understanding, was uh, the brainchild of Dave White, who at the time was the community services director. It was through his efforts that the front nine was created and then the back nine came along later. Um, three, four years ago, the city, the citizens of Casa Grande approved a bond that allowed uh, a new watering system, two new pump stations uh, to be put in and allowed us to grow some really nice grass and the, the course has taken uh, a really good turn for the better as far as con conditions go. Tell us a little bit about maybe some opportunities for golf instruction. Golf instruction, we have individual instruction. I'm a class A PGA professional and I have an apprentice who's an, appre or assist an apprentice in the program and I've been teaching now for 30 some years. I've given over 15,000 lessons to all different types from beginners to people who are playing some of the mini tours and that sort of thing. Um, I've been a certified club fitter for 20 some years also. And so uh, you have individual instruction, we have group instruction, we have free clinics. With the next one is going to be j Saturday, January 14th at 9.30 and it's going to be on putting, which is probably the most difficult thing to teach and to learn. Um, we also have uh, a great program for juniors. We've expanded it a lot in the last three years. Um, we have a, a clinic, a two-day clinic in March during the spring break. We have a full week for uh, the, younger, the younger children from 7 to 11 in early June. The following week it's the 11 or 12 to 17 year olds and it's four, day, four days and we have a tournament at the end of that. Uh, Two years ago, we also uh, were given the permission by the Southwest section of the PGA to have the Antigua Junior Tour here in Casa Grande. We're a, a district, and my former apprentice was the district director of that. And it's six tournaments during the summer on Mondays, played at the various golf courses in the area, the ones that are open during the summer. And uh, uh, kids from the age of, I think, nine 
through 17 are allowed to play in those. And the ones who do well are invited to a two-day tournament that's played at Antelope Hills in Prescott in, in August. Um, we also, um, this past year, started a golf academy for the students who are really, really interested in getting better. And for six weeks on a Tuesday evening for two hours, three of us, Nick Russo from Parks and Rec, who's a former assistant professional, um, my former assistant Joe Gellner and I would spend two hours on those Tuesday nights with these students who were really interested in learning. And after six weeks, it was really amazing how much they had improved. And we're going to probably even expand that more this summer. So uh, if uh, somebody wants to get into, a, into instruction, they can take individual instruction, or if they have a group of people who want to get together in six or eight of them and want to have a group lesson, um, we can do that also. Wow, that's a great opportunity. So somebody like me that's never golfed, Yes, again, you can teach me? Oh, yes. As long as the person is willing to learn, we can teach you. Golf is a difficult game to learn, but it's something that you get you really get hooked on very easily and really enjoy. You have um, quite an expansive league out at the golf course. This, this winter, we have 22 different leagues going. Um, and then for the full year, we have the Men's Golf Association and the Women's Golf Association, who have one major tournament every month, but every Saturday uh, the ladies have a, a, what they call a pot game, and the men have a pot game also. And then during the summer we also have what they call the Summer League, uh, Summer Twilight League, where various businesses sponsor a team, and we play for like 10 weeks on a Thursday evening. So if, if business wants to get involved in that, just have them give us a call, because it really is a lot of fun and uh, people really enjoy it. So it seems like you catered to both the young and the, the mature group. Yes, well again, most of our golfers uh, during the season of January through March are more of the senior, senior golfers. Uh, spring, summer, and fall, um, this is more of the juniors. And of course, we also host the, both high schools, both boys and girls high school teams um, out at the course. And, um, for their tournaments and also for their practice. So do you offer fundraising opportunities for, for groups out there? We have a lot of people who, who are interested in raising fun, money for uh, various charities, whatever it is, and if, if they want to come out and talk to us, we'll, uh, I have you know, 30 years of experience of raising, of doing fundraisers for, for various charities and uh, lots of ideas, but it really comes down to the work put in by the the uh, people running the tournament, getting sponsors, and that sort of thing. Why should we play at Dave White Golf Course as opposed to other golf courses throughout the area? Because it's fun. All the golf courses in the area are very good. Uh, but Dave White is, is the type of facility where if you're an, ex, uh, an expert golfer or a beginner, you can still enjoy yourself. The way it's designed, the way it's laid out, the way uh, uh, if you're an expert golfer, you can shoot some really good scores, it, but as a, uh, a, new, a newer beginning golfer, it doesn't beat you up too badly so that you still want to come back out and play it. How many golfers do you see on an average per day? I know it varies, but... It varies time of the year. Uh, during December, we've been doing about 150, well, on the days that the weather is good, right. we've been doing 150 to 170. Uh, January through March, we'll, we'll do 250 to 260. And then once we get into April, it'll drop back to about 200. And then during the summer, we get 60 to 100 golfers a day. So does it get difficult to get a tee time? Uh, during the season, uh, January through March, it is difficult but not impossible. Um, the general public is allowed five days to make, uh, five days in advance to make tee times. And I would suggest you do so. But later in the day, if you want to come out and play nine holes, you can still get on for nine holes later in the day. And what hours do you operate? Morning till daylight till um, till dark, basically. You mentioned you have a golf shop. What what items do you have for sale there? Well, your normal golf the th golf items you need for golf: tees, hats, gloves, balls. Um, we also have shoes, um, men's and women's apparel, uh, the latest golf gadgets, and we can get pretty much anything that's out there, anything that you want to that maybe want to purchase. Our prices are very competitive to the big box stores. 
Uh, I don't know anybody who really beats our prices. And we continue to have demo days, so if there's a particular brand you want to try out, as a matter of fact, we're having one uh, on January 10th from 10 to 2. That'll be the Ping uh, fitting van will be there, and you can come out and try their clubs, and they'll actually build you the clubs. Right so there. you could accommodate any golfer? Any Start golfer. Start to finish right there. Start to finish. Uh, the biggest thing that people, I think, should get into is having themselves fit for putters because it's a very important part of the game and most people are playing with putters that don't fit them so they're making compensating moves all the time and they'll, they'll, sometimes they'll putt well and sometimes they'll, they'll putt very poorly and they get frustrated. But with the correct equipment, they won't. Do you have any plans for future renovations or improvements to the golf course? There's, there's a lot of plans. We've, we've recently been working on a five-year plan. A lot of it depends upon funding and the economy. But uh, looking to improve the, golf, the quality of the golf course itself and uh, making some changes to some of the holes. And uh, we have some trees between holes four and five that have real, they're thorny mesquites and they have some real big thorns on them and we want to try to get rid of those and replant some other trees in there that, that won't be as much of a hazard because our golf carts drive in there even though they're not supposed to and uh, get flat tires, but I'm more concerned about somebody getting injured because of the thorns. Bob, what's the staff size like at Dave White Golf Course? Well, as far as, far as the golf operations staff, we have about 10 people. We have four that are outside that, take, that pull the carts out in the morning, pick the range, clean the clean the range walls, clean the carts, and make sure that they're operating properly. And we have six people. Um, one full-time, my assistant, Adam Brungard, who's brand new to me, but he's doing a great job. I uh, think he's got a great future in the golf business. And then some people who are part-time that uh, run the counter and, and the bar, and uh, they're the real characters in the, in the organization. Bob, how do you maintain a golf course? Well, fortunately, I have a superintendent, Bruce Gemmel, who, who knows how to do that, and he has a staff of people that help him. But it's a very complicated process. It, it's growing grass, and yet you depend upon the weather and uh, lots of different factors. And he has a lot of classes that he has to go to to learn the proper ways to grow grass and to aerate the, the soil and the proper soil amendments to put down and keeping the weeds down and the, the heights of the mowers and all that stuff. Bob, is there anything else you'd like to add to the, about the golf course? Not really, except the fact that the, the, I think the reason that uh, you had asked earlier about why they should play at Dave White, and it's this friendliness of the staff. Uh, very unique individuals on staff. Uh, very, very qualified, very caring people. And they like to see people have a good time. And so when they come through the door, they'll, they'll, they'll kid them a little bit, and after a few times, they're like old friends, and uh, some of them have been there for a number of years, and it makes people feel very comfortable there. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show today. The pleasure was mine. The Dave White Municipal Golf Course is located at 2121 North Thornton Road. To book your tea time, visit casagrandeaz.gov or call 520-836-9216. It's time for a short break. When we come back, we'll learn more about the services provided by the Casagran Public Library. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Leon Potter with United Way of Pinal County. Happy New Year. Just wanted to let you know that United Way of Pinal County is offering free tax preparation services to those who qualify. The Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program is a free tax preparation service provided by IRS certified volunteers. In order to qualify, residents must earn $50,000 or less of taxable income with dependents or earn $25,000 or less without dependents. Other residents who qualify include disabled persons, seniors, and those who speak a language other than English in the household. Volunteer sites will be available at locations throughout the county. For more information, call United Way of Pinal County at area code 520-836-0736 or visit unitedwayofpc.org. Welcome back to City Scene. We all know that libraries are full of books, but did you know you can take classes at the library? Joining me now are city librarians Amber Kent and Julie Yen. Welcome, ladies. Hi, Mary. Thank you. Let's begin by talking about what services you offer for adult residents. We have a lot of programs and services for adults. We have book discussion groups, a writers group, 
as well as technology classes um, where you can learn Facebook, genealogy, and, and other topics, our databases. We also have special speakers who come in every once in a while to run workshops or to talk about topics like finance or health or genealogy. And all of our programs, our regular programs, are located in the City Activity Guide. And then the special programs, we usually have announcements up at both libraries. You talk about technology. E-readers have become the thing, the current trend. Can you talk a little bit about the differences, what exactly they are? E-readers or electronic readers are different types of devices where people can read e-books, electronic books, or listen to e-audio books, or movie, watch movies, or listen to music as well. And there are several different types out on the market, and in our class we kind of just talk about different aspects to e-reader devices that you may want to consider when shopping for one, and how to borrow items from the digital library to use on the e-readers. Um, e-readers generally consist of the Kindle, or the iPad, or the Nook Color, or the Nook Touch, and there's other varieties of e-readers. So you brought different samples with you. Mm -hmm. This is the Amazon Kindle that we have at the library. And then we also have the iPad 2 at the library. And for anybody who comes to our classes, they're welcome to take a look at these and see what features appeal to them and make their decisions from there. How does somebody check out an, uh, an e-book from the library? In order to check out an e-book or an e-audio book from the library, you do need an active library card and PIN number or password to uh, access the digital account. Julie, tell us a little more about the classes you offer for residents that are learning English as a foreign language. We have a free tutoring program at the library for people who want to learn English and reading, writing, and speaking skills. We, do, we have volunteer tutors who meet with them one or two times a week and work on English topics. We also offer a talk time session that meets every week to give a, people a chance to practice speaking English in a conversational setting. And we also have classes. Uh, we're also looking for volunteers to become tutors. So if anybody's interested in becoming a volunteer tutor or wants to sign up to get a tutor, they can just stop by either library. Julie, what other classes do you offer for adults? We offer GED prep, language learning, genealogy databases, basic computers and internet and email, and Facebook. And all of our classes are listed in the activity guide in the middle of the booklet are all of our library programs. And how do they sign up for those? There's a registration form inside the booklet or there's also registration forms at either library location that people can fill out. Do those classes change every couple of months or are those just standard classes? The classes and offerings do change every few months and they're usually listed in the upcoming brochure. Okay, great, thank you. Amber, let's talk about programs for families and children. Yes, both library branches have programs um, like story time and crafts for children and their families. There are a few new programs coming this spring that we're really excited about. One is the digital story time that they have at the main library. Um, the librarian there uses the Nook Color to, to do a story time, so each family in the group will get a Nook Color and they'll be able to follow along. That way families that don't have access to e-readers or that kind of technology can kind of get a feel for it. Um, there's also brain time for the really young children at the main library and um, coming up we're going to try a sensory story time at the Vista library and it will be a special story time that's specifically for children who have sensory processing issues or are special needs so they might have difficulty sitting still or following along or they might get overwhelmed with a big crowd of unruly children so we'll have a special story time just for them in the spring and then for the older kids um, we have after school crafts, we have gaming for teens or tweens, and we have a Lego club too monthly at the main library downtown. I know First Things First offers a fun van to support early literacy. When do they come to the Cass Grand Libraries? I believe they come to the main library on Thursday afternoons. They don't visit the, the Vista Library, but they come and they bring, they bring a van. It's kind of like a bookmobile. Um, and the children can go on the van and they have their own kind of story time kind of program where they might do crafts and they, they do read with the kids and they also have some parenting one-on-one -on -one help so that the parents can then go home and use the same methods to teach their kids and get them ready for kindergarten. Amber, does the library have any outreach activities? 
It does. The library has a bookmobile that runs all through the winter, October through April, and they go out twice a day. And they both mostly visit the um, retirement communities in Casa Grande. And for a schedule, you'll have to call the library um, to get what times and, and what locations there they're going to visit. What's the purpose of doing that? Um, well, some of the people have a difficult time getting to the library, especially if they're homebound, um, so it's difficult for them to get out of the community or make the trek all the way to the library. So they can browse the books and, and other materials that are on the bookmobile, or they can put things on hold and select to pick it up at the bookmobile. So the bookmobile will bring out the items that they requested and they can check them out. That's a great opportunity for folks. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the differences between the Vista Grande Library and the Casa Grande Main Library. Both library branches offer the same services and they have the same, they both have um, more than one librarian. They have children's services and they have adult services and they also have teen services. The Vista Grande Library opened in 2009 as a joint use facility. So it not only serves the public as a public library as the main library does, during the school day, it's also the school library for the students at Vista Grande High School. So having a joint use facility means that we can serve both audiences, a wider audience. Do you see a lot of students actually come into your library every day? We do, especially before school and after school. They can come in and they're just like any public patron. They can use the computers and they can check out movies. During the school day, that's restricted and they have to have a library pass to come in. So during the school day, it's actually pretty quiet for the public to come in and use the library. Let's talk about the process to get a library card. What is needed to get a library card is a photo ID and proof of your current Pinal County residential address if you uh, don't have it on your photo ID. So for winter visitors, a rental agreement or utility bill showing name and service location will work as proof of address. And for anybody who usually has a P.O. box, we again could see a utility bill or voter registration card that shows residential address. Julie, how does the Castor Grand Library System interface with the Pinal County Library System? We are a partnership called a consortium and we are able to borrow books from other libraries, our library card holders, and they are able to borrow books DVDs, audiobooks, CDs uh, from us as well. So it's a really great way to share resources among all the libraries in Pinal County. How does the system work? Do they just come in and check it out? If it's something that's owned by another library, then we just place a request online through the system. And if the other library will lend it, they'll send it over within a week to two weeks. And uh, you can pick it up at whichever library branch you designate. And then when you're done, you bring it back to us and we'll send it back to that home library. What's the benefit of doing that? The lowers the cost of everybody buying their own collections. And some libraries specialize in certain areas and are willing to lend out those particular collections. Say some libraries specialize in Westerns and they have a really great Western collection and are willing to lend out those books to other libraries. What a great system. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun and it's great because we can all share and benefit from it. Amber, let's talk about library hours. They differ a little bit between the two libraries. The main library is open Sunday through Friday. Sunday they're open 1 to 5, then Monday through Thursday 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and then Friday 9 to 5. The Vista Library is open from Monday through Saturday 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, and then 9 to 5 on Saturday. So between the two branches, there are library services available seven days a week. But the main library is open, um, is closed on Saturday, and the Vista Library is closed on Sunday. Ladies, thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything you'd like to add? I would just like to mention that although the Vista Library is really new and beautiful, that the main library will be getting, getting a facelift later this year. So look forward to news and announcements on that. Amber? Okay, and just um, I want to encourage anyone who hasn't been to the Vista Library especially, but either library, to check it out and come and see us, um, see what there is to offer, because it isn't just books anymore. Um, libraries are a great place to learn new skills or to pick up movies, entertainment, all sorts of things. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. To learn more about youth and adult programs at the Casa Grande Library, pick up the city's activity guide located at both the main and Vista libraries. You can also visit the library online at cglibrary.org. 
Okay, here's your chance to win a Casa Grande gift bag. Each month on City Scene, we will ask you a question about the show and give you an opportunity to answer it for a chance to win. But first, we'd like to congratulate Liz Reinhardt, last month's City Scene winner. Congratulations, Liz. This month's City Scene question is, how many public libraries does the City of Casa Grande have? Submit your answer on our website, casagrandeaz.gov. Just look for the City Scene logo, and good luck. That wraps up this edition of City Scene. Be sure to tune in on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7.30 a.m., 11.30 a.m., and 7.30 p.m. right here on Channel 11. New episodes air the beginning of every month. I'm your host, Mary Allen. Thanks for watching. Remember, City Scene is your inside look at Casa Grande. See you next time.